Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon from Department of English, VSSG College, Kanpur. We are doing paper 13 linguistics and in it, this module number 13, Morphological Structures of English Words has been written by Dr. T. R. Murli Krishnan from MES Asambi College, Trishur. In this module, we are going to discuss what is morphology and before we pass on to morphological study, let us recall what morphology is. Morphology is the systematic study of morphemes that is the smallest unit of grammar. Morphemes are taken into consideration based on two essential factors. They cannot be split into smaller morphemes and number two, it is a word or a part of a word that has meaning. Just as etymology, that is the study of the origin of words and phonology, that is the study of the sounds of a language are relevant in the description of language in terms of words, morphology, the systematic study of morphemes, that is I told you the smallest unit of the uh, grammar is significant. Certain important terms related to morphology are root, free morpheme, base, stem and bound morpheme. A base is any morpheme or combination of morphemes to which one can attach either an inflectional suffix or derivational suffix. For example, hot, hotter, boy, boys, boy, boyhood. This hood, this s, this er, they are the suffixes. Now let's also discuss quickly what is inflectional and derivational morphology. New words are formed in English by putting certain morphemes before some words while adding certain morphemes after some words. In the word unpredictable, the root morpheme predict is added with able, predictable and those two are preceded by the morpheme un. un predictable. So in a nutshell there are three. So root word is predict, un is prefix, able is suffix that makes into another word, unpredictable. Now what are the fundamental rules that govern morphological operations? Both inflection and derivation make use of suffixes but derivation makes a new word like good, goodness, authorship whereas inflection merely changes the relations of case number gender person tense etc like dog is dogs dogs look looks looked looking inflectional affixes may be attached to stems containing derivational affixes but derivational affixes do not attach to others containing inflectional affixes hence inflection suffix occurs to the right of the derivational suffixes and inflectional prefixes occur to the left of the derivational prefixes in english prefixes are always derivational Inflectional suffix performs a grammatical function in a word without changing the word class of the particular word. Derivation plus inflection plus past, for example, hospital plus eyes plus ed, hospitalized. Derivation plus inflection plus plural, for example, work plus er plus s, workers. Compounding plus inflection plus plural, for example, football s, footballs. Root plus inflection, that is comparative, for example, small plus er, smaller. There are certain rules that no other morpheme can usually be added after an inflectional morpheme, for example, derivations is not possible. Derivations is possibility. We cannot say derivationist. 
unlike inflectional affixes which are always suffixes in english derivational affixes may be either prefixes or suffixes for example restructure or restructured kindness are possible but not kindness kindness is not possible next rule says that unlike derivational affixes inflectional affixes always have a regular meaning for example s denotes more than one in cats in tables in boxes but age in breakage shortage do not have age with consistent meaning in breakage something else in shortage something else there are class maintaining and class changing prefixes for example when i say mini mini skirt mini bus that means small when i say non it means negative like non payment or nonsense without any sense then we have x x member x husband on the other side we have a a a sleep a blaze or n that makes it enable and rich so that is the class maintaining and class changing prefixes similarly there are class maintaining and class changing suffixes also under the derivational category for example class maintaining suffixes we can say dom dumb like kingdom sum like handsome ship like kinship scholarship in the same way we have class changing suffixes like asian ation like reservation confirmation or we have ish ish like boyish childish etc one can add inflectional affixes to all members of a class but in the derivational affixes such addition is not possible nationalize plus asian nationalization you can see on your screen english derivative morphology derivation is there which is leading to prefixes suffixes and in prefixes we have noun verb adjective on the other side we have noun verb and adjective in suffixes as well so english words can be grouped into two morphological classes base words like child house demand and derived words like one root plus bound morphemes for example friend lee lee is the bound morpheme and the friend is the root word two or more roots like book shop both are roots but together they just give you another sense book shop two or more roots plus bound morphemes like book shops this s is the bound morpheme and two or more roots are there in the form of book shop english has an extensive derivational morphology now to form adjective from verbs from able we can say agreeable affordable adaptable if we say f u l full then we have words like helpful harmful hopeful but when we are there to form adjectives from adjective like ish i s h yellowish yellow is something and yellowish then smallish to form adverbs from adjectives that we use ly calmly hopefully quickly then we have to form adverbs from other words like words we have backwards westwards ways like crossways sideways etc so this is known as english derivative morphology now we have inflectional forms in english in this chart you see that inflectional forms also have nouns pronouns verbs and adjectives when we talk about nouns so english nouns have only two inflectional forms the possessive case as in man mans and the plural form as in man men regular are cat cats cats as is in possessive and cats after that uh, plural so put comma irregular man men mans mins whereas the english genitive is always regular and is suffixed to either the base form or the plural form of the noun the english plural is frequently irregular like man men foot 
feet goose geese sheep sheep datum data etc now the morphology of the english personal pronouns is extremely irregular you know that in subjective case it's i in objective case it's me we becomes us and epithetic possessive of i is my and predicative possessive is mine in the same way we has objective case as us and possessive are and predicative possessive is ours now in the case of the verbs english verbs have five inflections they are infinite the s form the ing form the ed form and the ed form in the second space hence the example like walk walks walking walked and walked adjectives are not inflected for person or number in modern english the only surviving form of inflection is for the formation of the comparative and superlative degrees high higher highest fast faster fastest regular adverbs form their comparative and superlative degrees like the regular adjectives some of such adverbial forms are identical phonetically with adjectives he drives fast he drives faster he drives fastest of all word building processes the two common word building processes were discussed earlier that we told you that suffixes and prefixes other word building processes are discussed like modifying the base or the stem root that is sing song vowel is replaced by a different vowel sing song this i is replaced by o and the whole meaning changes foot becomes feet like vowel changes to its corresponding fronted vowel no change of form deer remains deer sheep remains sheep word building processes also has compounding in it compounding means words formed from two or more bases it may be endocentric or exocentric for example rattlesnake girlfriend windmill they are endocentric forms they can substitute for one of its component parts redneck hot dog high bro loud mouth they are exocentric forms they cannot be derived from the sum of their parts next there are compounds in which both elements are heads for example teacher researcher producer director they can be called coordinative compounds now we also use conversion conversion is a process in which a word may be shifted from one word class into another word class without the addition of a derivational affix for example he elbowed through the crowd what is your best catch the children might dirty the school notice the word elbowed catch and dirty now we have back formation like a new word is formed by deleting the suffix or what erroneously looks like a suffix at the end of the word like affliction afflict clipping this involves the omission of part of a word like memorandum we have memo blending a new word is created out of the two old word like a smog that is a blend of a smoke and fog becomes smog then we have acronyms like virus the full form the words are vital information resources under seas and we say it virus better known as virus only virus becomes and takes form of a word itself many people they don't know that they are using the short form or the first letter of so many words they know it as virus now paradigmatic relations and syntagmatic relations are there a paradigm is a series of changes in the shape of linguistic forms which matches a series of changes in position for example the following words constitute paradigms of verbal forms like see seen saw seen write writing wrote written cook becomes cooking cooked cooked the following words contribute paradigms of noun forms like man mans or men 
child childs or children car cars and cars if a number of linguistic units are joined in a structural bond according to the rules of utterance formation in that language such units are in syntactic relationship the three sounds in tell are in this particular relationship and three phonemes t e and i the phonological rules of english do not allow the formation of word with the sounds certain sounds there can also be a syntactic relationship at the morphological level they are joined together in a structural bond according to nida to identify morphemes we must have certain partially similar forms in which we can recognize recurring partials in paint and paints and painted the paradigm exhibiting certain partially similar forms includes certain recognizable recurring partials now let us also discuss morphophonemics briefly the elementary definition of for morphophonemics is that it is the study of the relationship between morphology and phonology when morphemes are clustered or grouped in words then changes in the phonological structure of these words occur such changes are called morphophonemic changes now what are these changes some common types of morphophonemic changes are loss of phonemes addition of phonemes simple change of phonemes assimilation and dissimilation synthesis stress shift and gradation and suppletion morphological typology is the categorization of a language according to the extent to which words in the language are clearly divisible into individual morphemes morphological typology is like a spectrum in which languages fit in somewhere from analytic to polysynthetic the two main morphological types are analytic languages and synthetic languages analytic languages these are also known as isolating languages because they are composed of isolated or free morphemes languages that are purely analytic in structure don't use any prefixes or suffixes ever english on the other hand is one of the most analytic indo-european languages but is still usually classified as a synthetic language synthetic languages differ from analytic languages because they do use affixes they are also known as bound morphemes they are three subtypes of synthetic languages agglutinating languages are there in these languages morphemes within words are usually clearly recognizable so as to make it easy to tell where the morpheme boundaries are their affixes will only have a single meaning like turkish korean hungarian japanese etc then we have fusional languages similar to the the above mentioned languages except that the morpheme boundaries are much more difficult to discern affixes are often fused with the stems and can have multiple meanings a prime example of a fusional language is spanish then we have polysynthetic languages these languages are undoubtedly some of the most difficult to learn they often have verbs that can express the entirety of a typical sentence in english which they do by incorporating nouns into verb forms there is one more thing known as sandhi sandhi is any modification in pronunciation at a grammatical boundary the term is taken from the ancient sanskrit grammarians in internal sandhi the change applies within a single word at a boundary between two morphemes for example in the word electric when pronounced in isolation the sound k electric comes in the final but when the suffix ity is added the resulting electricity is pronounced with s electricity and not with k in external sandhi the change applies across the boundary between two consecutive words for example in isolation don't is pronounced with a final ta and u is pronounced with an initial but in the phrase don't you the t and the j often merge into a single affricate st morphological processes are there 
Concatenation, a method of adding continuous affixes, which is the most common process, often marked by phonological changes on morpheme boundaries. Then we have reduplication. This method makes use of rhyme like flower power, hob knob, helter skelter, walkie talkie, flip flop. Morpheme internal changes are there. The word changes internally as in sing, sang, sung, man, men, etc. Please watch this video that I am going to show you in this particular module for the better understanding of the module. Hi, welcome to this week's episode. Today we're going to talk about morphology. In linguistics. Morphology is a branch of linguistics that deals with the structure and form of the words in a language. And all words can be divided into two categories. Content words and function words. Content words are words that have a clear lexical meaning. This class is composed of nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. They are words for people, things, actions, ideas, and attributes. Content words are considered an open class because new words can be added and indeed are added to this category. Due to changes in technology, we've added words such as dumb phone and blog. Changing fashion trends have given us shooties and jeggings. We've added new words to describe food and food eaters, such as frankenfood or locavore. Social media has given us words such as defriend and tweeps. And the list could go on. Function words, on the other hand, do not have a clear lexical meaning, but do serve a functional purpose in a language. These are words such as conjunctions, articles, prepositions, and pronouns. Function words are considered a closed class, because generally speaking, we do not make additions to this category. When was the last time you've seen a new preposition? Words are all around us. We write them, we speak them, we think them. Some words are made up of one piece, but many other words are made up of more than one piece, more than one component, and these components are called morphemes. A morpheme is a minimal unit of meaning, so while some words can consist of one morpheme and thus be minimal units of meaning in and of themselves, most words consist of more than one morpheme. The word piece has one morpheme and thus cannot be broken down into smaller units of meaning. Piece full has two morphemes. Piece, a state of harmony that exists during the absence of war, plus full, a suffix meaning full of something. Peacefully has three morphemes, piece plus full plus li, because li in and of itself holds the meaning of in the manner of. So really, peacefully contains three units of meaning that when combined together give us the meaning of the word as a whole. Obviously words can have a lot more than three morphemes. Anti-disestablishmentarianism has a total of seven, and there are words with even more than that. We should keep in mind that some morphemes can be used by themselves. These are called free morphemes. They're not dependent on any other morpheme to complete their meaning. Open class content words such as girl, fish, tree, and love are all considered free morphemes, as are closed class function words such as the, and, for, or it. Other morphemes cannot be used by themselves and are dependent on other morphemes. These are called bound morphemes, and bound morphemes are further divided into two categories, affixes and bound roots. Bound roots are roots that cannot be used by themselves. For example, sieve and receive, conceive and deceive cannot stand on its own. I cannot sieve something. Affixes are morphemes that can be added to the front of a word, a prefix such as pre, re, dis, or un, to the end of a word, a suffix such as an, eyes, al, or li, or in other languages to the middle of the word called infixes, or to both sides of the word called circumfixes. And affixes can be divided into two categories of their own. Wait, what? Yeah. How about we take a moment to review first? Morphemes are the basic units of meaning. Morphemes can be divided into two classes, bound morphemes and free morphemes. Free morphemes include open class content words, such as cute, dog, run, away, and closed class function words, such as the, on, yet, and he. Bound morphemes can be divided into two categories, affixes and roots. Bound roots, such as sieve, cannot be used by themselves. Affixes, in English, are the prefixes and suffixes that we add to the beginning or ending of a word, and are further divided into derivational affixes and inflectional affixes. 
Derivational affixes are affixes that, when added to a word, create a new word with a new meaning. They're called derivational precisely because a new word is derived when they're added to the original word. And many times, these newly created words belong to a new grammatical category. Some affixes turn nouns into adjectives, like beauty to beautiful. Some change verbs into nouns, like sing to singer. Some change adjectives to adverbs, like precise to precisely. Still others turn nouns to verbs, adjectives to nouns, and verbs to adjectives. Other affixes do not change the grammatical category of the word they're added to. King plus dumb goes from noun to noun. Do plus re goes from verb to verb. Blue plus ish goes from adjective to adjective. We use derivational affixes constantly, and they're a very important part of English because they help us to form the majority of words that exist in our language. In English, all of the inflectional affixes are suffixes that, when added to the end of the word, don't change its meaning, or at least not in any large sense. Instead, they change things like the person, tense, and number of a word. And in English, there are a total of eight. The third person singular, s, such as Anakin kills younglings. The past tense, ed, such as Ron kissed Hermione. The progressive, ing, such as Han is falling into the Sarlacc pit. The past participle, en, such as the emperor has fallen and cannot get up. The plural, s, such as vampires make the worst boyfriends. The possessive s, such as, that's Luke's hand, isn't it? The comparative er, such as, Picard is cooler than Kirk. And the superlative est, such as, that's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Compared to other languages, English has very few inflectional affixes, but they serve their purpose well nonetheless. I realize that this is a lot of information. Stay tuned for a few more videos on morphology, where we'll introduce a few new concepts and go over some of the concepts we've already covered. Till next time. Hope you have gone through and now you have a clearer understanding of the term morphology and the morphological uh, grammar. So when you see that, when you find that and understand it properly, then it is easy for you to form words, to understand words, to understand the structure of the words, how these words occur for you. So happy reading and happy understanding. Thanks for visiting EPG Pathshala.